Welcome to Open Segment Turning. This is part three of a three-part series about different ways of building a vessel using spaces between the individual segments. I showed you an on-lathe method. I showed you in the last section a off-lathe technique. And I'm going to show you a third technique, which I had alluded to. And this is a technique using what was called a sag easy plates. And there's a number of different ones. Uh, this plate will allow you to put 48 segments into these wedges with the proper spacing. And it says it's a 48 2, which means that 2 degrees are taken out of the necessary included angle. Well, there's a whole bunch of different sizes. There's a 36, which 3 degrees are taken out, and a 24, which I have set up properly here. So this is what it begins to look like when you're using one of these sag easy plates. This is a sag easy plate that's a 24-4, which means out of the 15 degree included angle, we take away four degrees. That reads 11. And so my miter cuts are 5.5 degrees, flip 5.5 degrees, making 11 degree included angle. And that's what you've got here. So I've put a ring of segments together here put a rubber band around them to hold them in place because I've mounted this like they have suggested on a board and in the center of the board there is a small dick hole line the point. So to mount this 24 segments all at once I put that center, I add the glue, well I lock the tailstock and it's done. Just that simple. So we cut the segments in the same way we sand them in the same way. We then set them on the plate in the proper slot. This is an on-lathe technique for using these sag easy plates. Uh, it's fine if you like to stick them on this way on the lathe. You take the board, mount it to a piece of plywood for some rigidity, make sure that the center is identified. And we can do that by going right through the center of the plate knowing that there's an alignment point right there. I use rubber bands around them because sticking them into these slots is not necessarily going to hold them in place. They could fall out. But once it's glued on, I can remove the rubber band, pull the plate away, and everything will be done and ready for the next layer. So the next layer, you cut the pieces, put them in the plate, and so on. So what angles, what's the segment edge length for each of these plates? And you buy these from sageasy.com. The reference, the link is down in the description below the video. You will also be able to download a piece like this. Here's the process for using it. And here is a table showing that whatever diameter you want for this particular plate, what the segment edge length would be in eighths of an inch from four inches all the way up to the maximum of the plate. So you buy the plate. You download this cut sheet and that would give you the segment edge length but not sufficient for doing a vessel I still need my drawing should have started with this one this is what I'm going to build next it's a, a coma Akama piece here's what the cross section of it looks like and then I created a cut list, and the cut list I said open segments. This is woodturnerpro.com that I'm using. And I specified what it says on the plate four degree angle removed. So I inputted that into the spreadsheet, and it gives me the cut list width, segment edge length, uh, angle for the cut of 5.5 degrees times two is 11 minus the four that I set up. So in other words, all this could be set up in Woodturner Pro ahead of time. I look at this, it says four degrees included angle. I tell Woodturner Pro that, and it gives me the standard cut list for the project. So that's one way to use it. Let me show you another way to use it. Reset just a little bit. Uh, I wanted to use the end of the lathe to demonstrate the next way of using these sag easy plates. Well, this one's orange. It just happens to be older, but it's still the 24-4 segment plate. 
And what's different about this is I'm going to use this thing off the lathe, and I'm going to use this thing here, which is called a segment stopper. So I'm putting the pieces in. Uh, this is used horizontally. I've cut my pieces to whatever the spreadsheet said I needed. I'm placing them in place. I don't need a rubber band. And I've got, okay, 23, 24, okay. Now I put glue on these pieces. Here's the where it's going to be fastened to the, this is the base ring for a new vessel. You see in the base I have drilled a very shallow hole. That's exactly the diameter as this tip, which means to get this aligned, I can set it on the top of this rod and it's perfect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply glue, and to glue all these rings, that, and a little weight, and I'm done. This is called a segment stopper. If you go to woodturnerpro.com, you'll find Lloyd Johnson describing how to build one. He has them for sale, and he explains how this interesting device is created and I'll explain it to you right now. This is no more than a pop-up sprinkler head that you can get at your local hardware store. Now it has a spring in it so that when you turn the water on to lawn your water your lawn, the spring is overcome by the water pressure and the thing is forced upward. Turn off the water, the spring forces it back down. All I did was take it apart and put the spring on the other side. So now the spring holds it up and the weight of the faceplate holds it down. And that's all it is. I took a board, drilled a hole in it, mounted this on the back, and you do have to find some way to align your base piece on this top. And it's just simple as a very shallow groove. I think that's about a sixteenth of an inch deep. And when I start shaping this piece, a little coving in this area right here, and that'll go away. Segment stopper, another way to use the seg easy plates for building off the lathe. So I promised you a third portion in this uh, last video in the session. I want to put the project we had just built in the last video. I hope you've seen it. I'm going to put it on the lathe and I'm going to start to turn it. I'm not going to be able to complete it, uh, but you know, there are a few things that are unique about turning open segment pieces that I want to kind of point out. And a little bit about the tools and the way I approach the cutting. So I'm going to clear the stage all over again and I'm going to go back to a normal turning setup, bring you the open segment piece that we made in the last video and show you how I approach turning an open segment vessel. Be back in a minute. Okay, we've reset again, and I have the project that we glued up in the last section. This is the base portion, here's the top portion of the same vessel. Remember I did a lot with these pipe cleaners when they were wet, being able to go in between these joints and remove any of that excess glue that I could. As a result, these joints look pretty clean. There may have been a little bit I didn't get, but as the tight bond dries, it tends to go clear. So that works out really fine. Before I brought these from home, I made sure that this was running true. It looks pretty good. And I sanded and made sure this one was running true. And before I put this piece on the lathe, I have to be sure that these two are square to the axis of this lathe. This is not the lathe they were assembled on or sanded on. And so as a result, I just want to be sure. That's looking really pretty good. I expected that, but I really didn't know for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the base section on the headstock. And I'm going to put the top section on the tailstock. I'm using one of these Live Center systems that has a thread adapter that goes on, allowing me to screw my one and a quarter eight face plates 
directly on the tailstock. If you don't have something like that, a cone center set inside the tailstock uh, thread, I mean inside of the face, pe face plate thread, I'll get it out, uh, will work. Not so well, but it will work. So I'm going to put these pieces together roughly in the orientation they're going to go. Put a little pressure on it and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out of the picture a second to get a felt marker. I'm going to mark these face plates so I know what is lined up with what. This one has a black mark on it, so I'm going to come along here and match that with a mark on this one. That means when I finally glue the two halves together, I'm going to have the same rotational orientation as I had at this moment. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Now the tools I'm going to use to turn this I just reached in this cabinet and pulled out a bowl gouge. This looks like a half inch. Um, I would tend to normally use a 3 8 a smaller one, but just a standard uh, bowl gouge. I do find that I use round nose scrapers, and I've got two of mine I brought in from home. They're fairly small tipped, fairly narrow. Uh, these are uh, 3 quarter inch, half inch, 3 quarter inch. Uh, this one has a negative rake on it. No, it's a little less aggressive inside. Uh, and I find I'll use those specifically on the inside to knock the corners off of these segments before I go in there with a the gouge. I don't want to catch the edge of the gouge on the corner of one of these segments and end up ripping something apart. It may not happen, but I just don't want to take that risk. So these are in reserve. The other thing I brought along in case this wasn't flat was one of my sanding sticks. Uh, this one has 120 grit sandpaper on it, which is what I tend to be using now because I'm getting pieces pretty flat. Uh, somebody in one of the videos asked why this is marked top. That's because I know this edge is flat. And when I lay this on the tool rest, I know it's going to be square. And if I keep top up, I know that it's not rocking like that. Don't actually need it. These look pretty good. I might need it later. Who knows? So I'm going to position this tool rest in about the normal place. Uh, one thing in turning open segment pieces, there's going to be a lot of dust coming. Two reasons. Number one, it's dry wood. And number two, all these little air gaps are going to start flipping this stuff around a lot. So if you're dealing with woods that are exotics, um, you might want to be sure that you have a dust mask on just because of the carcinogenic nature of uh, oily exotics and tropical hardwoods. Um, different pair of safety glasses, but always glasses. Different because I can't find my other good ones. Okay. Speed to zero. So what I see, there's a little bounce all the way around everything. That's okay. That just happens. So now I'm going to get the speed up a little bit. Got these clamped together with a little bit of force. Not too much. I don't want to break anything. And I'm going to simply turn the outside shape here, center down to base, center down to top. So very light cuts, like that's a light cut. And after a couple, three strokes, I will have knocked the corner off on these pieces, and you can see it on some of these beginning to round a little bit. And once these pieces have been rounded and these corners broken back, I'm in a place where I can take maybe a little more aggressive cuts in a more normal manner. But I'm very cautious when I start these. And I'm uh, right about 1,000 RPM, a little slow maybe. And all the time I'm working towards the shape. Now I've just come around this piece of oak. And as I come around, I'm just about to run into this piece of bloodwood. So that means more square corners. So I've got to be cautious. I'm getting those corners knocked back. hear the difference in the sound as I go from one species to the next. The 
back into oak with square corners again. And back into plywood. And back into oak. Now this piece of oak is going to turn all the way down to that face plate, but it's also what's holding this whole bottom section together, so I'm going to avoid working on that for a little bit. I don't want to take too much of that away until close to the end. Go back to the center. Into the blood wood. Into the oak. harder through this, but I'm keeping it against the wood. I'm allowing the wood to cut itself and advance the tool. I'm not pushing. So as we roll, it's taking a little time. And I'm not going to go all the way down to the base. So what we have now, rounded, rounded, eh, sort of rounded. This area here has a lot of work to be done, but now I'm going to go towards the top and do the same thing again. You're not going to see me turn this whole piece. Uh, there's not enough time to do that. But I am going to do some of the outside cuts. I'm going to finish the outside off camera, and then I want to show you what it looks like working on the inside. So let me shape the top down. See these real big square corners? Those are risk areas. Be cautious. Okay, I like the bottom reasonably well, and I'm going to stop on the outside at this point. Remove this piece, which I'm not going to work on at the moment. It's out of the way. And now there's a couple of issues to consider. Well, first of all, I've got to make the inside match the outside, but look at all these pieces standing up here without any support on them. For me to cut on this piece right here, that piece is not held on by anything other than this little area on the bottom. So I've got to be very careful I'm going to go inside with my tool rest so I can have maximum support. Set that out of the way. And now I'm thinking that a half inch bowl gouge is a little bit too big. And by the way, just working on that oak for a few minutes, this edge is totally gone. Oak apparently takes the edge off the tool pretty doggone fast. So I'm going to stop and go sharpen real quick and then I'll be right back with a sharp tool, smaller sharp tool and we'll work the inside of that with that and the scraper. Give me a second, I'll be back. Okay, I just went and picked up a 3H bowl gouge, uh, relatively sharp, ready to go back to work again. I want a smaller gouge. Um, I think that the cuts are going to be easier to manage. I'm taking my tailstock out for more elbow clearance and here we go. I want the speed relatively fast because I don't want to catch these corners and then hit an air, catch air. So I'm going to make very light cuts with the gouge. Okay, I've gone from the top layer of these oak pieces. I've gotten down to where this bloodwood piece is. 
the difference is you can tell the sound how that thing's bouncing around but I'm almost at oh little over a quarter of an inch and I might not go any farther down than that I might well just let me see what's happening but once I'm down into the next layer I've got a lot more support I could use this gouge all the way down but sometimes it is more convenient to use I'm going to use the uh, standard scraper positive rake But I don't want to go straight in, I want to go down angle when I'm using my scraper, so that means raise the tool rest slightly. And I'm going to go in sort of like that. Uh, maybe not quite so much. Tight. Flat on the tool rest. Those touches are really light. Sounds bad because the pieces are vibrating. Here's a negative rate scraper doing the same cut. I like the sound here better. each layer one at a time. So I've gone from the oak to the bloodwood and I'm back to oak again and I'm looking in here it's looking pretty good. But now those cuts are very light. This is a narrow negative rake scraper seems to be doing the better job. So back to it. When we get to the bottom of that, I'm going to run into the corner on the next layer. Be cautious and be aware. There's the corner of the bloodwood. There's the oak. There's the bloodwood. I know you can hear the differences in the sound. Now, a big corner down here near the bottom. I'm just taking the corner of the corner, each cut a little deeper, with my scraper I can go down like I am now, or up. Enough of that noise. You see what I'm doing. And also the nice thing is self-clearing for chips. I don't have to worry about getting the chips out of here. So I can tell right now this level's done, this level's done, this oak right here is not done. I can tell there's a bump, a huge bump in it. And I'm beginning to come around this corner down here. So all I gotta do is continue to do that. Uh, a bowl gouge getting down inside of here is gonna be really difficult unless it's a very short grind and I think about bowl gouges being maybe a little too aggressive on the inside. Uh, I like my scrapers, my negative rake ones particularly, 
small, narrow ones because they also take smaller, lighter bites. The other thing I want to do is to keep the speed as high as I feel comfortable with. Right now, that's about 1500. That seems fine. I can go faster as I get closer to the bottom when the pieces are closer together. This, the radial speed past the cutting edge has gone way down. So I need a little bit more speed near the bottom. And I can keep finishing this thing, and you've seen bowls being cut before. But I wanted to show you some of the techniques I use with my round nose scrapers, and it's particularly some of these narrow ones. Uh, I did the outside with the larger gouge. I went and started this cut here like I would inside a bowl with this tool bevel lined up with the outside surface. So I'm cutting straight down into that piece and then coming around. It's that rowing motion kind of thing. Uh, and that was okay right near the top. As I get down in here, I might have been able to continue to use it a little bit further, but I really like the scraper. I feel more control with that, and I know it's going to fit every place I need to go. So, dust and everything included. This is the end of the third of these open segment sections I've done, and I've done two or three pieces. I know you've been watching, and I appreciate your comments and feedback, and uh, I hope that you attempt some of these techniques, whether it's on the lathe or off the lathe, whether it's through a fixture or whether it's through a seg easy plate, there's options, lots of options. And to get the software done exactly right, uh, we talked about that in the first portions of uh, the segment turning where we're doing ring segmented. Uh, it's the same technique, but we just take a little bit off as we discussed. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of this series. We'll be back next week with another video, new subject. Sign up, register, give us your comments. Thanks for watching.